Hi everyone and welcome to part 3 of my mini-series on Legendre polynomials. In today's lesson we're going to verify that the Rodriguez formula gives you Legendre polynomials. If you remember the previous video then we used the recursion relation we got from solving Legendre's ODE to show that an explicit formula for Legendre polynomials was given by this equation with m as your running index. What we're going to do first here is show that Rodriguez formula which is stated right here, so 1 over 2 to the power k times k factorial times the kth derivative of x squared minus 1, all of that raised to the power k, is equivalent to this series up here. To do this I'm going to start by applying the binomial theorem to this x squared minus 1 to the power k quantity. Recall that in the binomial theorem when you expand out x plus y to the power n, you get the sum from i equals 0 to n of n factorial over i factorial times n minus i factorial times x to the power n minus i times y to the power i. So if I applied this binomial theorem to the x squared minus 1 to the power k in the Rodriguez formula, here's what I would end up with. Note that the n from the binomial theorem has been replaced by the k. If I plug this into the Rodriguez formula, then here is what I end up with. Now the fun part begins. Recall that the derivative is a linear operator, which means that the derivative of the sum of multiple functions is the sum of their derivatives. What this means is that I can move the derivative inside the summation. Since the k's, i's, and negative 1's are all constant, I can move the derivative to the point that it's only being operated on the x squared term. Now here's the slightly tricky part. How do I find a nice expression for the kth derivative of x squared to the power k minus i? Well, I could do one of two things. I could start crying and send an email to my prof to make the class less difficult, entitled undergrads, or I could derive an equation myself. In this video, I'll be doing the latter. In fact, I'm going to derive a fairly general equation for the nth derivative of x to the power r, where r isn't necessarily equal to n and then I'll apply that equation to the kth derivative of x squared to the power k minus i. To derive the expression, I'm going to first write out the first few derivatives of x to the power r, then use what I've written to infer an expression for the nth derivative of x to the power r. So the first derivative of x to the power r, meaning n equals 1 over here, is r times x to the power r minus 1 which is just r factorial over r minus 1 factorial times x to the power r minus 1. Since r factorial over r minus 1 factorial is just equal to r, just use the definition of the factorial. The second derivative would be r times r minus 1 times x to the power r minus 2, which is just r factorial over r minus 2 factorial times x to the power r minus 2. Notice the pattern here. If you did, then you'll see that the nth derivative of x to the power r is just r factorial over r minus n factorial times x to the power r minus n. Let's apply this derived expression to the kth derivative of x squared to the power k minus i. The power on x here is 2k minus 2y because 2 times k minus i is 2k minus 2y. So the kth derivative is just 2k minus 2y factorial over k minus 2i factorial times x to the power k minus 2i. Let's now take this expression and put it back into our Rodriguez formula. And here's what we'll end up with. The only thing left to do now is figure out the limits on the running index i. We already know that i has to start at 0 to give you the x to the power k term, but where does it end? Well, notice that k and i are both positive integers. And when we take the kth derivative of x to the power some positive integer, like 2k minus 2i, then we can only take derivatives to the point where we get to x to the power 0. Beyond x to the power 0, if we take any more derivatives, we'll keep getting 0 since the derivative of a constant, like x to the power 0, is 0. We won't ever get to negative powers of x. So for example, the second derivative of x squared is 2, and if we take derivatives beyond that, like the third, fourth, fifth, etc., they'll all be zero. The power will never become negative on the x, since the lowest it can become is x to the power zero, which is the constant term. Thus, the limit on i 
is k over 2 since the power on x, so k minus 2y, which comes from taking this derivative can never be less than 0. There's another possible limit on i, and that's k minus 1 over 2. This limit comes in when your k is odd, so you're taking an odd derivative of x raised to some even power, since 2k minus 2i is a multiple of 2, which makes it an even power. Now when you take an odd derivative of an even power of x, the lowest term you can get is x to the power 1, which is why the upper limit on i that occurs when k is odd is k minus 1 over 2. So using these upper limits we found, this is what our Rodriguez formula becomes. The last thing we now have to do is multiply in our 2 to the power k and k factorial. If we do that, then the k factorials will cancel out and we'll have an extra 2 to the power k in the denominator of the summation. So something like this. Now look at this expression, which we got from manipulating the Rodriguez formula, and compare it to the Legendre polynomial formula we found in the previous video. You'll see that the formulae are the exact same with the only difference being the index i changed to an index m. Thus we've shown that the Rodriguez formula gives you Legendre polynomials, and so we verified that the kth order Legendre polynomial equals 1 over 2 to the power k k factorial times the kth derivative of x squared minus 1 to the power k. Anyway, that should be it for this rather short video. My next few videos are going to be about a bunch of different topics. I'll probably make another video or two about Bessel functions, explaining them in more detail. I'll also continue my series on PDEs, complex variables, nonlinear dynamics, and quantum mech, so stay tuned for those videos as well. I'll also probably start a new series on general relativity, tensor algebra, and fluid mechanics, so stay tuned for those as well, but they'll come later. So I'll have plenty of work to do in the next couple of weeks during the winter break. Anyway, thanks for watching and happy holidays.